Is it a bad idea for a new screenwriter who's just finished a screenplay to immediately send it out to an agent or manager? Absolutely. Um, there's some advice that I like to give in this area because I do get this question a lot of like, I've got a screenplay, what do I do with it now? You know, first of all, you want to have a couple of trusted people who you know, they know how to read a screenplay and give notes. You should never send the first draft of anything out. I, you know, even seasoned screenwriters don't do that. You know, they have their managers go over their material and give notes, give suggestions. Um, if you're at a point where you have had someone give a lot of notes and you've done rewrites, you know, you'll hear screenwriting is rewriting. I'm sure you hear that all the time. I've heard it a lot in my career because it's the truth. Um, being able to send your work out into the world is essential because it's a collaborative medium. You write a screenplay because it's supposed to become a film or a, t a TV show or whatever it is. Having someone that you trust, for instance, I have a couple of people I went to the AFI with who are in the industry who always read my work and give tremendous notes and I do the same. Um, I don't send it out to 10 people because that's just, you're setting yourself up for hell. You know, you want a couple of trusted people that you know, know how to read screenplays, send it to them, right? If you're someone who doesn't have a manager, I will say this, you don't need a manager or an agent. You just don't. You don't need one when you're starting out. Um, if you're writing because you're trying to get a manager, then you're writing for the wrong reasons. Um, no one stays in this industry because they're trying to become famous at being a screenwriter. You want to make a living and a small percentage of people manage to do that. Um, what you want is someone to read your screenplay who has access to managers and agents if that's the route you want to go. Producers are much more effective. Have a look at who's making your film, right? Go on IMDb Pro. You should have an account, right? It's only 130 a year, I think, or something and it gives you access to everything. So have a look at who's making films like yours, um, find who's producing them, find their company, call them, and have someone from their office read it. Um, I'm a big believer in empowering people because that's what happened to me when I started as an assistant. You know, very rarely, but sometimes a new writer or someone would call me and say, hey, will you read my script? I'm like, well, wait, you don't want my boss to read it? I'm like, no. I want you to tell me what you think, right? I still have relationships with those people now because they took the time to empower me. Who has more to gain from reading your script and getting it to a manager? Their assistants. So don't ask them, don't ask for a manager, don't ask for an agent. Get to their assistants and, and, and create a relationship with them, empower them, have them read it. They're not sitting on this guy's desk or this person's desk because they don't know how to read scripts. So should you send it out after you finish writing it? No, you should get some good notes from people you trust and then you should rewrite. And then you should get more notes and you should rewrite. Do that two or three times. Get a script that everyone's looked at, you've taken the notes and you've gone, you know what, These, this note's useful, uh, this, not, this note's not useful. As a screenwriter, you have to become um, you have to become aware of what notes are useful and what aren't. And so that's relationship based. Join a writer's group, you know, try to find a writer's group. I don't want to say don't join Facebook writer's groups, but honestly, some of them can be a minefield. Um, and I think some of them are also tremendous and very supportive. That might be something you can look into, but do you send out a first draft of a script? Never. Can you talk about the lookbook? Yes, the lookbook. I didn't learn this in grad school. Um, we were never required to make a lookbook. This is something I found when I went to work in the studio and it, it's just help, so helpful. Um, there are different versions. Uh, f when I'm writing a screenplay, I create a lookbook. It's, um, it's a complement to the visual story for me. So. Should I put an entire one page synopsis in the lookbook telling a manager what it's about? No, absolutely not. You want them to read your screenplay, right? Should you put a log line? Absolutely. So you'll start with like a title page and then you might have, the idea here is to set a tone. You know, if it's a horror movie, 
we should feel the horror movie in visuals on your, on your lookbook or pitch deck, as you'll hear it called. Um, but I create one because it helps me see the movie. It helps me see the setting sometimes. And you can just, I just could use Google, Google, you know, this type of character, what does that look like? And I might go, oh, that's it. So I spend some time creating, um, you can use you know, PowerPoint or Canva, or a lot of those will allow you to, to create these, but the information in them should be very, it should never be longer than 10 slides. And that might include, you know, uh, for me, it might include the title, the title, uh, the log line with a little bit of a blurb. Then you'll get into the characters, your main characters, not, not your minor characters. I don't want to see 50 slides for characters. But your main, your main, you know, might be antagonist, protagonist, or whoever the, the main characters are. And then you might have something in the setting, the idea of where is our setting, is that important? Um, and this is very general because different genres will, will, will require different things. I don't make them wordy because I don't want them spending two hours reading my pitch deck and then have to get to my script. So for me, it's a, it's a visual stimulus, something I can send as a compliment to the script or ahead of the script to say, hey, I've got this project. I've just finished a rewrite on it. Got some really great feedback. Here's the deck. Can you tell me if this is something you might like? You know, and I might have some movie comps. Okay, so do your research in IMDb Pro. What movies is your movie like? You know, um, <laughs> it will be like something, promise me, it should be. If, there's an, if you can't do a comp on a page, I'm, I don't know, I'm, how do I sell it? How am I gonna know how to sell it? So, you know, have a look at and think about inspirations of what your movie was like, uh, you know, movie was like. And then a contact page, if you don't have a rep, you gotta have that. But very, very general, you know, descriptions of your character. Who is your character? What do they want? In the bio section of your character pages. You could use actor, actors of stimulus um, to say this, you know, Alison Janney would be kind of like this. Do I have to cast Alison Janney? No, she's probably not gonna do my film. But um, as a way, don't just cast her headshot, try to find something character driven that tells us about the character visually. Um, so it can't just be Alice and Jenny, it might be her and Lou, or something, I don't know if you've seen Lou, it's a great movie on Netflix. Uh, but try to give us something character driven so we get a sense of the character and, and who they are. And so it's just a visual like compliment to the script and I love them. Um, I always, if someone just sends me a script, I'm going, do you have a lookbook? I, I generally do that because I want to see if they really understand the visual storytelling behind what they're saying in the script. And this is a PDF that you said you're making in Canva or PowerPoint or something? Yes, I make it in PowerPoint, but you bring up a good point. Don't send the PowerPoint um, because then you're giving them editing rights to your, to your thing. You know, save it as a PDF and send the PDF. Um, and look, you can convert PDF too, it's not a big deal. But, um, but yes, PDF takes up less room when you send an email, first of all. But I, cre I create it through Canva and I, I create it through PowerPoint. Uh, I can do both. Um, I, Canva is better if you want to share the link rather than just send it as an attachment. Um, Canva gives you that to be able to, it, it, it keeps, you keep ownership of the deck while sending the link for someone to read. Uh, it's a little more secure. But, um, but the creativity inside those two platforms is all your own, you know. And the objective is to elevate your script into a visual understanding same as a director would. So you're giving a director or a manager or an agent or a producer an idea of, okay, this is what it might look like. And are you choosing a color palette? As strange as that might sound, you know, if you think about Wes Anderson films, they're very uh, pastels, there's, mm -hmm. there's a beautiful look to them. Are you choosing that or no? Then now you're stepping on the director's work. No, I don't. I, I do if it's, if it's tonally right. You know, so you have to think about the tone, which is already in your screenplay anyway. So you're giving a visual representation of that. If you're doing Barbie, your pitch deck is gonna be colorful, right? Because Barbie is colorful. Um, if you're doing a romantic comedy, you're less likely to use blood oranges and dark reds and all of that kind of stuff, right? So color does play an important part um, in it, but a director isn't going to necessarily see that as the way they're supposed to do it, especially in film. Um, they're going to interpret the script but what I'm trying to do as a screenwriter is help them understand that I understand the tone 
and that this is a horror film. So this is the tone of my script. 